Um, okay, so we are now officially recording in the breakout room. Uh, okay, so there's two main topics. Uh, the first one is going to be about industrial uses in general, and then the second one is about Norwalk's waterfront. Uh, so um, just to give you a quick preview, first, uh, what I'd like us to be talking about for the first half is um, about the different industrial uses. You heard Maggie give a lot of presentation about the different possibilities, uh, ways that we are thinking about dividing them up, um, and sort of hearing some opinions from you all about what you think about that and if there's tweaks to it. Uh, and then uh, the second one will be about um, the waterfront uh, in specific. So we didn't really get into that in such great detail. Um, so this will be a chance to talk about what sort of the next steps are for the waterfront, um, potentially new things to be doing in the Harbor Plan. We have some ideas here, but um, we can get into that for the second half. All right, so I'll quickly just go through that. All right, so the questions to talk about are, what manufacturing, what manufacturing uses do you see uh, being appropriate for Norwalk? You know, could you envision in Norwalk? And then um, would you prefer to see not so much heavy really in, in most situations that isn't very likely for the 21st century, but between small scale boutique manufacturing and then larger scale light manufacturing, um, where perhaps the light scale larger manufacturing might provide more jobs, you know, where in the balance of those two things do you think the sort of needle should fall? Um, so just again, for reference, um, when we're talking about light industry, we're talking about, you know, bigger than 25,000 square feet. If we're talking R&D, things like distribution, uh, building materials, warehousing, and then light manufacturing really means um, things that are still being produced, but nowhere near the scale of, you know, the heavy industry, not rock crushing, not oil and propane gas. Um, it's sort of in some ways hard to define because that's something which continues to evolve with time. It's, um, you know, the, the industry and fields of tomorrow, so to speak. And then boutique manufacturing is um, sort of the same idea as light industry, but tweaked a little bit more towards the artisanal, right? So there's things that are made in small batches, woodworking, artistry, metalworking, textiles, uh, brewing, and so on and so forth. So these are some examples. This is sort of what you see when you think of boutique manufacturing, right? This could be anything from uh, baking to, um, you know, smaller scale manufacturing, light industry, you know, covers the gamut, whether it's uh, about food, about distribution, um, metalworking, and, you know, textiles, and heavy industry is, is what we have traditionally thought of as industry. Right? Uh, okay, so I'm going to temporarily turn off my screen so we can all see each other's lovely faces. Lovely faces. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear what y'all think. We're in a small enough group that I don't want to be the full moderator. Like, I think we're small enough that that we can take turns talking. But if that becomes crazy, I'll I can I can MC. Okay, I'll go for it. So, um, I if, if you're talking of uh, the boutique industries, would you uh, would Norwalk as a town regulate the environmental hazards that they would leach into the water or the environment? Oh, that's that's an excellent question. Um, so uh, I would say, you know, there's this idea in regulations of what you know a zoner a zoning lawyer would call performance standards, which are things that go with uh, the actual use tables themselves. And so the expectation for boutique or light manufacturing is that their impact on the environment around them would be minimal or or non-existent. And so the expectation is either. Um, they handle their own issues or there aren't really supposed to be issues to begin with. If it starts to create environmental detrimental effects, that actually is the kind of thing that's le leading into what we would otherwise be calling heavy industry. So the long way of my saying, yes, absolutely. That would be, that would be a fundamental part of it. I just wanted to, first of all, I think you guys have done a great job. And secondly, uh, you know, the, you know, Norwalk has uh, traditionally been the harbor and the, and the river have traditionally been industrial. So I think that the existing uses should, you know, should be allowed mostly because of that. And the other thing that I that I see in terms of the way that you're approaching this is you're looking at uh, new construction for the most part, with the possible exception of Norton. And there's no real, uh, I'm, I'm Todd Bryant, 23 Morgan Avenue. I'll go through the whole thing. And I'm the president of the Norwalk Preservation Trust. We have not discussed this as an organization, to be clear, because you know, 
this just came up. But I don't see any uh, consideration for the use of existing buildings. There are there are there are some industrial some boutique uses in existing industrial buildings, and also some other uses in, in existing industrial buildings. And um, I, th I think that there should be some mention of that in order to, because those, those, those uh, ceiling heights are you know, lower than 40 feet in most cases, sometimes they're not. Uh, and there's, I think there should be some uh, uh, consideration of that. Um, I like that you're making more than a special case because the recent, you know, recent uh, proposals for that site uh, certainly prove that it is a special case. Um, so aside from that, the, you know, for me, anything with low impact, I mean, if you, if you go back to classic Euclidean voting, if it's, you know, the lower the impact, the better. So thank you. That's an excellent point. Thank you very much. It, um, yeah. yeah. So looking at the question that you asked, um, whether one would like to see uh, light industrial or boutique, I don't think there's any one simple answer. I think we'd like to see a combination of both. And depending on where they're going to be located, obviously boutique would be more in the, uh, the area where there's a the central downtown area or <clears throat> and so forth. So I, I think they would fit better there. And then, then the outlying districts, maybe some of the uh, light industrial would be more appropriate. So I don't think there's any one answer. I think there's a combination of things that really um, we should be striving to achieve. Yeah. So I, I think that sounds fair. I, um, you know, going back to uh, what the gentleman had said previously. Um, so, so one, yes, boutique and light, like there's no one, one size fits all solution. So I think he gave us a straw man there, but um because boutique sounds fun right it's like oh it's cool it's artisanal it's this but the reality is that light provides jobs and, and you know we we need that as well so um there's you know unless we're going to turn into some hipster bohemian uh, uh outpost uh in fairfield county you know both both have their place so the um can I, can I ask a quick follow up to that? Because I think yeah, sure. you're correct. It's a bit of a straw man unfair question, but you're actually getting at something well, I think you answered it, but there is something within the question that's not quite so straw man, which is more fundamental. Like, and you know, the mayor and you have basically said, no, they're both important. They're both fundamental parts to Norwalk. But what you said the second half, like unless we want to become a hipster boutique of Fairfield County, I would venture to say, that we've heard from some constituents that that is actually wanted, right? Uh, not everyone necessarily wants the cake, like the two pieces of it. Some people think that industry has no role in the city. Like it's, it's an old fashioned thing. We don't need more of it. Like light doesn't make sense, right? And so I just, I just want to yeah. clarify that a little bit. No, that's fair. And, and honestly, I, I went, uh, of all places, I went to Cleveland about a year ago and downtown Cleveland, what they've done there is, is insane. It, it is, it is really heavy on the boutique uh, kind of uh, elements that you're talking about. And, and they actually have taken along the river there and turned it into, you know, desirable locations where people, where you would actually want to go have a beer on the river, as opposed to right now where, you know, we, we, we've basically used it for every industrial purpose possible. Um, you know, where, where the overhead map, whenever I see that, I just have to laugh. It's like, holy cow, we've taken the most amazing slice of real estate. And, and I think that part of that goes to what the gentleman had said before, that, you know, historically, we grew up with, uh, I mean, this, this town was built around that, those industrial uses. So I, I don't mean to, to make light of it or knock it, but um, I, I feel like we, with what you've got going on here, we have a huge opportunity if if we can find you know more appropriate uses for the 21st century. Yeah, well, I mean, and 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 you know, to your to to everybody's point here about hipster central, uh, you know, I, I think that's not a bad thing, especially in the Wall Street West Avenue area. 
that uh, where where that's kind of organically happening anyway, and, uh, and you know to 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 uh, reinforce that and encourage it, I think is a really good thing. And there's a certain edge of it that used to be in Soto, but I think that no longer exists. But I, I also agree with you about uh, water-based uses in entertainment on, in Sono that there there are you know big gaps there that uh, that that should be filled with something that is more useful than say an empty contractor lot or you know yeah yeah I mean we all know what I'm talking about yeah or 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 residential that you know that while it's fine uh, in itself it doesn't really add to the life in the city. Yeah, one other concern I have with the zone simplification uh, elements that you were showing is where I live in East Norwalk, um, you know, we, we're already going through a lot of change or, or anticipating a lot of change with the TOD uh, uh, moving forward. And so a lot of the areas um, that I'm thinking of are, are zoned as, I'll say, you know, uh, restricted industrial, where everything is like special permit, but you do have a lot of grandfathered in buildings like the Dooney and Burke building, for instance, um, which, or, or, you know, pretty much anything that runs sort of along the, the train tracks there. And I, and I feel like if we're not careful, all of a sudden I'll wake up one day and, you know, I live in the middle of a manufacturing zone because the zone simplification has created an opportunity for um, for whoever is developing to suddenly, you know, fill it up with uh, with things that we might say, oh, well, that's you know, light industrial, but if you live next to it, it doesn't feel light. So, yeah, well, yeah. but I'm, I, you know, in terms of existing buildings, I'm thinking of wind, in, in East Norwalk, I'm thinking of wind balance building that, you know, is, is a prime suspect for, for a lot of this. I mean, that's just that is begging to be filled up with this kind of, of uh, industry. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for your presentation. Um, in thinking about, you know, whether we're doing boutique or light industry, I think we want to think about the people that live in Norwalk and the people that are maybe seeking employment here as opposed to people coming into our city. And as we work through this, I think it's kind of important to keep them in mind and what the people that live here might do, or if they are new industries, what educational opportunities are there for people to be trained in the businesses that come to our city. Um, and I'm very much into historic preservation. I think, you know, Connecticut has some charm. Um, industry is not necessarily always charming, but we have a very um, long historic um, acknowledgement of Long Island Sound and keeping it that way. It is sort of a shame that, you know, the industrial places are on the riverfront, but back in the day, that's where they went because you needed the boats to um, come up the river to bring in the goods or take out the goods that we were manufacturing. Um, but they can be made cleaner. And um, I think everybody here is kind of saying um, it's very important to keep the environment in mind. And our waterfront is an asset, um, not only for possibly industry, but also for recreation, which is important, especially as we add more people to our city. So I think those are some things that are are definitely important to me as I look at this or, or think about it and the balance of the neighborhoods. And, you know, we've just seen recently how um, East Norwalk residents really came out very strongly, not just East Norwalk residents, but a lot of Norwalk residents came out against uh, the potential use of the distribution plant at the Norden site. And, and I think people like their neighborhoods. They, they want a little bit of change and make it to look better, but they don't really want to change the whole dynamic of their neighborhood. So I think we really need to keep that in mind too, as, as we look at whatever changes we're trying to create here. Preservation is important. Thank you very much. It's almost like do no harm, right? 
like as yeah. if we're doing a little bit of medicine here. Um, now I, I'm trying to be mindful of time, so I'm going to switch to question two if that's okay. So, uh, all right. So very quickly, let me just share the screen again. All right. So for topic two, uh, the two questions here again are: What's the most important part of the riverfront to you? I think we've begun to touch on this, but I think we could focus on a little bit more. And then what you actually want to see happen, um, which I think again we hipster central began to appear a little bit in that conversation. And so um, this is, you know, the current way that we're looking at the, the plan. And so it's a lot more complicated than the simplified industrial zones we've been talking about. There's all the different, you know, sub areas and that kind of thing. Um, and if you think this makes sense, if there's parts that you think should be changing, um, you know, one idea here would be, um, you know, this, one of the big ideas is that access is a fundamental part of of it, right? All of you have already mentioned, you know, the how it's sort of funny that we've taken the most prime part of it and made it all be for industrial. And so even if industry gets to stay, um, then there's still ways that you can find access um, and you know, some, allow some version of public benefit to the waterfront with the industries that are already there. So that's all I have for slides. Um, and so we hopefully, unless you need me to bring this back up, you know, we can definitely handle 12 minutes with the conversation here too. I think the waterfront is a tremendous asset for the city of Norwalk, and we certainly understand that industry uh, developed along the waterfront because they were water dependent uses. Um, and you're starting to see a return, uh, uh, some of that, where they're looking at, well, let's keep the trucks off the road and let's use um, uh, navigational areas to, to bring goods into the city of Norwalk um, and other places. One of them is uh, <laughs> Uh, Harbor Harvest over on uh, uh, Cove Avenue. Uh, they've got a wonderful little area over there and they have a, a boat that goes across to Long Island, bringing goods from Connecticut to Long Island and bringing goods from Long Island back to Connecticut. And it's really an interesting, uh, uh, interesting idea. Uh, one of the things I've kind of found is that municipalities, uh, for the most part, maybe plan for five or 10 years. They don't really go much beyond that. And that's really short-sighted because we don't know what's going to happen 50 to 100 years from now. So anything we do now might have an impact or might prevent us from doing something later on. So it's got to be really carefully thought out. I mean, I can see the waterfront, as, um, as I think Todd mentioned earlier, as an area that draws people into Norwalk, recreational areas, restaurants, uh, boutique shops, and the kinds of things where, uh, you know, only a waterfront can provide that kind of an opportunity. Uh, but we also understand that, you know, we have a place like Divine Brothers, a family-run business that's been there for uh, well over, I, I think, over 50 years, I'm not sure. Um, and, uh, you know, so... What do you do with a place like that? It's a uh, it's a working harbor in that regard, but could it be something more? Could it be something that would be better for the overall economy of Norwalk? And uh, how how do we make that happen? So I think we really need to look at the waterfront, and be very very careful how we proceed, uh, because I think we need to. Okay, what do you want to be, and how do we get there? If uh, if I may see something to segue from what Mayor Rilling was just talking about. My name is Tom Keegan. I'm uh, on the Common Council. I think that um, City of Norwalk should cash in on our uh, oyster industry. I think that that's a big part of Norwalk that for the most part is hidden from everyone. Um, <laughs> you couldn't ask 10 people where, you know, the oyster boats, uh, you know, dock and, and take off from and I don't think half of them would know. And I think that that's uh, a great opportunity for us, a historical um, type of an event, fishing, the oyster industry. I think that part of East Norwalk is uh, really um, something that we should look at very carefully if we're gonna develop our waterfront. And, and oystering is an, an industry, so it, it is part of the whole industrial you know, movement that we're talking about tonight. So, yeah, that's what I got to say about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they've been there. And the people have been. They were oystering lots in the 1650s that were that were uh, uh, parceled out in Norwalk. So you're absolutely right about that.
But I think, I, I mean, I think that, you know, as, as uh, Mayor Willing said, you know, some parts are still, some parts probably should still be industrial, but some other parts are underdeveloped in terms of, of uh, you know, attractive businesses. So how do you, uh, this is something I keep trying to wrap my head around. There are things that we want to change, like what you just mentioned, where it's like, we, you know, if there is something undeveloped or underdeveloped right now that doesn't have a Divine Brothers or a King Industries or what, what have you on it, how do we change that without, uh, I mean, it, I, I could see us saying, okay, we're going to change the zoning to this. And then whoever owns the lot sues the city because uh, we've, we've now changed the quote unquote value of, of what they've got. Like, is there, is there thought around that or, or how, how is that solved? Well, I could probably hit that one if, if you want. Um, so, so the process we're going through, you know, there, there'll be a plan that comes out of it with recommendations. So, the, you, you may be familiar with the city's uh, the citywide plan, which is a plan of conservation and development. So ultimately, what probably would have to happen is we would amend that plan to include the recommendations of this plan. So, and then the follow-up step is to actually amend the zoning regulations consistent with what's in the, this plan that's coming out here. So, if the city follows that process, you know, goes through a planning exercise and then goes through a public process of amending the citywide plan to reflect the, the changes that come out of this plan, we're, we're following the correct legal steps to do so. So that the city has broad powers how they want to change their zoning. So you wouldn't have to worry about um, you know, lawsuits, not to say somebody wouldn't be happy. And hopefully the changes that we would make would be for the betterment of you know, the entire community and would not you know, be discriminatory against any particular user or property owner. Gotcha. Thanks. To, to, to add my one sentence answer, also I'd like to follow up on what Steve said. This, the, what we're doing right now gives the city the most power to do these things. The whole point is to not be capricious. And we're having a lot of public meetings about it. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. I would add that I think that tourism as an industry has to have a, a key um, a point uh, along the, the waterfront. And uh, whatever can be done to uh, heighten, uh, advance that, uh, that, that, that industry uh, with venues, uh, access uh, for venues is, I think, very important. I know that even just taking a, a casual walk on the east side uh, of the river, um, uh, it, it breaks, it stops at a certain point. The walkway. It would be wonderful if, if that that uh, walkway um, somehow could be continued uh, through. I mean, that's just on a just a, on a walking basis. When you get along the um, the area of, of Washington Street to the south of it, uh, you have a, a breakup of some areas over there that are just parking lots. Um, with, with really no uh, the, uh, wonderful opportunity for venues uh, to be uh, uh, put in place there. Um, I know that there are a lot of boat yards as you go further south, but just along that area between Water Street and, and Washington, I think there's a great opportunity right within that, that section over there and perhaps across, across the bridge also, across from where uh, Vets Park is. And, uh, and along in that area. There, there are also areas there that can attract uh, tourists, um, uh, weekend tourists, summer tourists, people from the outside that'll generate revenue uh, for the town. Liberty Square is a, is a under, under, underappreciated, underused, I love it. Absolutely. It's not what we're talking about here, but I was like, that's interesting. Interesting you say that, Todd, because I was talking before and I said that should be our next project, right in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There and all the way down to the to the water. Yeah. Uh, which I believe is public land, if I'm not mistaken, Mayor. Right. I mean, you mean a vet's park? No, across the street from it. Oh, um, from uh, the square all the way down. I don't know. Uh, to the waterfront. I have 
I, I have a question, um, Will, just thinking about the, um, it, it was probably better asked in the last section, but I feel like it applies here as well, which is the, one of the things that I saw in the, uh, in, in the plan that you all shared tonight, which by the way, it's a really cool plan. I like it a lot. But there was one thing I saw that gave me like the willies, which was um, the, the no height restrictions on buildings. And um, again, living in East Norwalk, well, and, and, and I believe it was within specific zones, but those zones are, are malleable to, to move in, in other places. And, and again, living in East Norwalk and knowing that, you know, one of the big things that came up during the TOD was, was restriction on, on uh, you know, multifamily housing or building heights so that we're not changing the character of the community, of the neighborhood, what have you. And, and it feels like when I, I, I feel like I see cap and trade kind of uh, discussions go on around this where it's like, okay, we'll put it in there, but then we'll, you know, We'll, we'll put height, height restrictions in place, but then we'll give people uh, the ability to ignore that if they give us a, a fountain or, or a park bench or whatever it might be. The same I, kind of- concern. I warned them, just so you know. I told them when you put that slide in there, you're gonna hit someone's gonna say something about the East. <laughs> hey, but, but the, you know, as soon as I saw that, you know, like I said, that, that was like a big concern. And part of it, living over here in East Norwalk, I've seen some new homes, uh, you know, private homes go up on Duck Pond. And uh, at least one of them that I see being built right now is going up right in front of someone else's house between their home and the water. And I thought, well, so this home that's been here for 40, 50 years, however long, now, you know, was always had water views, always had property values based on those water views. And, and now somebody has said, my mansion's going up in front of yours and you know not not my problem and look the what happened over concern. shorefront park what's that shorefront park right along the water they built uh houses that are well higher number one because of the flood zone uh but uh, two and three stories high and the houses that have been there across the street uh completely lost their water view uh -huh. so yeah. it's the same kind of thing and those are the I think those are the issues that really uh, create problems and uh, need to be addressed. Uh, and in a, in a city like Norwalk, and we are a city, uh, it's a challenge in some areas because we are kind of strapped for land. We don't have a lot of available land for, uh, for building, that vacant land. So in the, out, in the, uh, the, suburb, the suburban area, uh, single family homes, maybe uh, uh, two family homes. People are focusing on the downtown area, the urban core, where right. people are saying, well, density and no uh, surface parking lots in the middle of your downtown area, like the Webster Street lot, which is a, a nightmare. You know, mm -hmm. very, very poor use of land. Absolutely. I just want to chime in on the building height. I think we're seeing the the, uh, the the problem with building height in both Wall Street and uh, the TOD that five stories is too much, but too late now. And just can I ask a clarifying question for the two of you? Is it too much because it doesn't fit the character, or too much like um, it's 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 um, like creating things that are totally inappropriate for the area in the first place? So, I mean. <laughs> that they, they kind of go hand in hand. So, so for me, one, it, it doesn't fit the character of the area, but then the, the other thing that I consider as part of that, and you can look in downtown Fairfield and see how they're screwing that up. Um, the, just like what we're talking about, where a single family home sits right next to now, you know, a, a 50 foot tall building. Um, and it's like, not not our problem, but I, I I raise it only because I don't want it to become our problem. Um, I my other concern with that density in this area, it, and time will tell whether I'm I'm just being alarmist or or realistic. But you know the concern is uh, it takes me 10, 15 minutes to get from my house to I ninety five, which is less than a mile drive. And as I consider all of the new uh, density that's going in. I recognize that it's meant to go on the train tracks uh, that 
you know, we have this vision that everybody's going to be commuting via train or Uber or what. Well, actually not Uber, but the point is I now picture a point five years from now where, or even October, where it's going to take me 25 to 30 minutes to get to 95 from there. So I've got to start planning my trips to go, uh, go up to Westport and get on exit 17 there. We were being summoned back into the other room. I don't know if you saw oh, that, Will. Sorry. Yeah, too much. Sorry. All right. Uh, but no, this is very, very helpful. I, we hear you on that too. Um, I'll just say a very final note, but, uh, just to answer that at least, just so you know, part of why we're trying to figure this out is it's like to avoid being a taking, it's like the other issue, which is that we can't kick people out and we can't like make people leave a certain, we don't want to make people leave a certain building to adjust new things. So at some point you have to get a carrot if you want change of some kind. And so maybe what you're saying is that we made the carrot too big. So we, we need to think about it, but we need to make the carrot just big enough at least that it's market viable. And so that's a balance that we're still working on a little bit. But anyway, thank you so much for your feedback. Um, and we'll go back to the main room.